So the stage is set as Super Saturday continues round nine from Marvel Stadium. Two sides very much with their eyes on the prize of a double chance this year. That's a long time into the future. Joel Selwood is back to lead the Cats. They couldn't have been much more impressive last week while the team they play against the Saints, Jonathan Brown and Jordan Lewis, they got a bit of a test, particularly last week, to really work out where they were. They were worked over, particularly in the first quarter and a half by Melbourne, weren't they? But today is another test against a quality side. Yeah, certainly were. Had no doubt about that. Melbourne, we know, are powerful. I think Brad Radden would have been a little bit disappointed that uh, St Kilda was so slow with their movement uh, and in contrast Geelong were magnificent the way they uh, moved the football against GWS so Brett Ratton no doubt he would have really uh, pushed that message this week that we need to play our brand of football against another top four challenger um, so let's see what happens today Jordy. Yeah and such a pivotal part of the ground is the centre bounce so you look at the Ruckman from the two sides and Lixarves will pinch hit with Stanley and then you've got Ryder and Marshall so that is a big contest for Saints to try and get some ascendancy Really looking forward to some matchups today, Hutto. Look, you look at last week, Jack Higgins had his quietest game for the year. He was blanketed by Jaden Hunt. So we know Mark O'Connor has gone back. He's a fantastic small defender slash tagger. He's played back the last couple of weeks. I think he'll probably go for Higgins. De Koning at the other at, uh, against King at yeah. the same end. He's gone to King. Ah, oh, great. Great to see. This could be a matchup for the next 10 years. So I love when you see these staff young forwards against the star young defender. We're set to go. St Kilda and Geelong. The Cats have been dominant against the Saints. They've won the last six and ten of the last eleven. Well, that trend continued. The Ruckman got all out of sorts. And who's blocked who? It's a free kick to the former Saint, Reece Stanley. Back into the team for Geelong after missing just the one week. And the Cats linking up. Duncan, who was so devastating early last week. The kick was too short. It wasn't the news Jeremy Cameron wanted. But Dangerfield adapted. It's play on. Stengel knew it. Stengel can hardly put a foot wrong at the moment, but he misses as that was slightly overplayed on the snap. I remember last week too, Mitch Duncan ran around with his own football of half-back, so influential early. Yeah, 16 disposals in the first quarter last week and 33 for the match. Battle sets them forward, and there is the first battle between King and De Koning. The only little slight King, but I don't reckon De Koning needs to be in a wrestle. Try and separate yourself. Get that one or two metres and come and impact when the ball gets there. The other size mismatch is Colin Jasny, who's on Marshall, who we yep. know can take a mark deep, along with a setup kick. Ryder will come late, but doesn't really contest in the end. There is O'Connor being held by Higgins, and they might get some reward here. No. So Glenn Long looks like he's playing as a forward in the absence of Dan Butler. When we were seeing in the back line, maybe in there just to help with the forward pressure. They are a bit bigger in the forward line today, St Kilda. And that is a, a blocking free to the Saints. Gee, a couple of ruck free kicks. But you can just see the way that St Kilda structure up down forward. They clearly want to take advantage of their height and the lack of for Geelong. There's still no Jack Henry for Geelong, so they are a man down, of course. In the last couple of years, they've lost a couple of very experienced defenders in Henderson and Taylor. So Paddy Ryder, he himself has only beaten Geelong once in nine games. For whatever reason, hasn't played them that many times through three clubs, but he couldn't have started this one much better. He hooks the first through, and the Saints are away. And given they didn't score a goal in the first quarter last week, that'll make them feel better. Yeah, you're right, and a couple of really important uh, individual plays within that transition from half-back, which... They haven't been able to do I think Joel Selwood just didn't see him. He was trying to get to, I think, steal it might have been and, and ran into Ryder. So that's a clear free kick. You can't impede the Ruckman from competing. But the transition from half back to link up with King at centre half forward and then continue on. So it looks like they want to move the ball, keep the ball in flow and really challenge the Geelong defence. Saints are four and four for first quarters. It was an issue early in the year. They had rectified it over the past month until last week when they were hit by the Demons. They have the first here. <laughs> Off the head of Ryder. Unconventional way of putting the hit out. Dangerfield and Selwood still clearly Geelong's best players at the centre square. They bang it deep and slight fumble from battle allowed Hawkins in. And you can't do that. We've seen the result already. Tom Hawkins has a goal on the board. Quick smart. Yeah, it just brute strength. And I think if you look primarily at the centre bounce, the last two clearances have come too easy. The first one was the half-backs getting involved, and then 
you can just see how in and tight St Kilda are. So when Selwood comes out, he's got a free lane. He can choose options in the middle of the ground. He goes to the Hawking, Hawkins contest, and he's just too strong, Brownie. Absolutely, yeah, fantastic. And Hawk, he's been beaten the last month or so in one-on-one -on -one contests, more often than not. So he'd be happy to get on the page there. Last week was a real problem for St Kilda. Four goals they conceded from centre bounce against Melbourne. Again, already won early in this game. Was, look at Mitch Duncan there, that half-back role. I wonder if Ben Long's been set for him as a defensive forward. Long normally plays up the other end. Yes, the Cats mode with the footy will be interesting too, won't it, after last week going back to that kick mark game? I'll tell you what they're doing really well, Geelong, is they're, is they're going man-on-man -man around the stoppages, understanding the power of Ryder and then working off their direct opponent. Jones and Selwood steal. A couple of tough nuts in there for their respective sides. Blitzales, who carried a huge ruck load last week. So it gets the high contact free. The St Kilda Banner didn't hold back pre-game, and alluding to Joel Selwood's ability to win free kicks as the kick goes driving in. Punch back by it. Howard. Guthrie rounded up. Stengel again. Had a look towards goal. Tried to work his way towards it off the boot. Battle. That to be wrapped up and realised the gravity of the situation. Stengel again. What an outstanding pickup he's been as the Cats play a bit of possession footy now to try and get a good look. Atkins. Committed to playing on, and then it's Cameron who's in his sights. And last week from roughly here, he was devastating. Yeah, big day today. So Cameron Milky, uh, Cameron Milky, Cameron Wilkie has got the job on Jeremy Cameron. Obviously, Wilkie's a fantastic athlete, but he's going to have his hands full with this man. It was magnificent last week. They do tend to, they're happy to have wider shots, Geelong. They have more shots than most teams in the competition. Particularly from, from this pocket. Absolutely. Hawkins leads there. Cameron finds himself there. He's going for a conventional drop punt. And maybe he should go back to the L shape. How dare he? Well, he went for the, for the hook kicks last week from quite a long way out. 40, 45 metres is capable, but the angle was a little better, not as severe on that occasion. Battle. They work their way centrally for the moment at least. Ross to Sinclair. The ball knocked out, not paid the mark. Hill and then Jones who returned with 20 disposals last week and an equal team high six score involvement. So he looked a bit rusty, but it was a pretty good return for his first game of the season. Ryder directs the kick towards Marshall. Zach Guthrie closed late. Could have been a free to the Saints. Narkel, O'Connor. But the call out wide from Guthrie is the ball pitching and then sliding towards the boundary line and goes over. It certainly looked like they've got more of a willingness St Kilda to move the ball forward this week uh, as opposed to last week. They just got stuck and kicked the ball, sort of moved the ball too slowly. But they've got to be conscious of Geelong's defenders like to sag back and protect the defensive 50. Isaac Smith. Back to Duncan, and some more of the same. Hawkins was right, Cameron was left. He probably went somewhere in between. Although Cameron somehow almost was able to sneak in and kick a goal. Great, great recovery. And, and I, if you want to help your defenders out, you cannot let the opposition access the corridor like Geelong were able to there. So, so long, oh, Hill, dear. bad kick in. And yeah, they'll get another shot through Stanley, but. You've got to try and keep them skinny as much as you possibly can. The transition that just happened in that last play was far too easy. Oh, nonchalant little give to Tui, even though he's well within range. Tui doesn't let him down. Yeah, good finish there. Just early on, just the trend of the game. So that was a turnover, obviously a bad kick out. But, you know, the actual clearances and the stoppage work is a problem. So Geelong establishing dominance early in this game, and that's really setting up their field position, Jordy. It feels like if there's if there's a stoppage or a mark at the moment, St Kilda are relaxing, falling asleep. They're not actually doing much to really prevent anything from happening. So, I mean, Stanley March, you've just got to expect the worst. You've got to be understanding of who is around him, who looks active. And that man there, he's only going there for one reason, to get a handball receiver and have a shot at goal. But for me, they just look a little bit off St Kilda and Geelong are capitalising. Not sure Reece Stanley wanted to go through the whole routine against his old team and going back for the set shot. A bit of feedback. Up against Marshall. As we said, that would be pivotal. Narkel taking his turn in the middle. Jones's timing was excellent. And he uses steel and then ultimately Hill. So they can move it forward. King wants it long. He had the one-on-one. -on -one. It might get there by Crouch and then out wide. Great to see Jack Billings back. 
Sets the kick up. Geelong have got reasonably well set. De Koning didn't overcommit. And then Duncan, who's back amongst it again, his service was outstanding to Blitzarves. Uh, he was fantastic last week, going around 80% by foot. Just set the whole game up. Blitzarves on the ruck had 25 touches, eight clearances as well. Not bad for a ruck. There's Nevitt worked over by Sinclair. And it, and it might be a chance here for King. He's not going to muck around at all. Improved the angle and got the result he was after. Good response from the Saints. Yeah, it was. It's De Koning just probably ball watched for a second too long. You just see here expecting to transition the ball. Then it was just an effort from Sinclair to get up. I mean, I can't emphasise enough how much coaching and how big a praise had gone on those efforts to stop that outlet kick to give yourself a chance to come back in. So Sinclair, brilliant work. It was an, an unusual spoil in a way, wasn't it? Yeah, it it was, did the yeah. job. Well, that's when St Kilda at their best, so put on maximum forward pressure. Turn that ball over in the front half. Gives them a better opportunity to go back and find a free forward. That's yep. Kings on the ball. Look at the Brad Hill, so it's a positional change. So off the half back. Wanganine Miller has showed some good signs last week. He's not playing today, so Hill goes back to half back. A few Hawthorne premierships between those two old teammates, Louis. A few duels in the 2.2k time trial as well. Gresham has been outstanding for them in the middle this year since returning to full fitness and Billings. And give them some bite off that wing. Plays it for memory. Connor Jasney is his company now. Stewart being forced back to some degree. So this is good pressure in the face of the Cats' defence. O'Connor was poised enough, and Stewart always is. Parfit. Had the itch to play on, and Blitzarves gave him the way out and ultimately threw to the wing off the boot of O'Connor. It sits well enough for Selwood, and then Smith marching on. Guides it for Hawkins. Stanley's got forward. Hawkins will have to trust his left boot now. Bit of a pocket for Cameron, a real standoff there. Myers crouched, did Myers fall on his back? You speak about work rate through Bradley Hill and Isaac Smith. Just Smithy's work rate to become an option and provide some run and carry. Crouch an outstanding tackle. Pressure he brings for the Saints. Had to be batted for it by McKenzie. Stanley tried to work it back, but the numbers on the odds were with the Saints. Now Webster with that punishing left foot kick to Koning. Tried to play the ball on its merits. King had to scrap against the numbers. An advantage is Geelong going to reverse. <laughs> Questionable whether that was the yeah, advantage. Was yeah. advantage yeah. So, so this is Geelong. This is St Kilda's challenge to try and disallow them to have marks. So even that teasing distance there needs to be sharper. As we saw last week, or we've seen over the period of time, Geelong they can just suck the time out of the clock and the opposition's energy. O'Connor, not the best kick to the advantage of his teammate, and instead it's Long that's able to take it for the Saints for the intercept mark, and then. Plays it into that forward line. Higgins, look at Stewart just rise over him. And Dangerfield can go through the middle. Narkel has Duncan looking it out. And then he just adjusts the kick for Cameron. Hawkins will be the goal square target. But Smith might have the ball sailing straight over his head. Cats at their punishing best. The run and the finish. Yeah, fantastic. They run well, as uh, Louis just alluded to, Isaac Smith and uh, Brad Hill, the 2K time trials, but he took off on the outer side, and that's what Geelong do as well as anyone. They take it. If the opposition gives them something, they will take it. They knew the corridor was open. They were able to switch it over into the corridor, out to the open, Isaac Smith. And, look, Geelong last week, we, we looked at the 143 marks they took and said, are they going back to that older style where they just retain possession? Well, I don't think they are. They're happy to move the ball forward, as you saw. Eventually, they were happy to just kick it along to the contest on the wing. Yes, they didn't win that contest, but they were able to move the ball forward, and they created a turnover. Here we go. Great finish by Isaac Smith. There was ducks and drakes after the game, though, wasn't there, when they were players <laughs> wouldn't say what Chris yeah, Scott had no, said? Yeah, exactly. Mitch Duncan said, I was signing autographs with the kids <laughs> giving, and he absolutely wasn't. My arm done. Out of the middle. Blitzhaus has to wear... Oh, he got through, barely, just... Shredded the tackle. Parfit hacking it forward and then hoping. Cameron, it was a long way down. Myers went straight into battle. Crouch. Cops some illegal contact. Yeah, well, they've got a good game of footy, boys. Yeah. High scoring again. The early 
Yeah. One of the earlier games, Hawthorne versus Richmond, high scoring, and, and this is under the roof, so it's good to watch. Not Fast. Players. Not 15. Hill just fastens the kick for Cooper Sharman. Back in the team today. His first full game for the season. After finishing last year well, it was set up for Duncan. He didn't overcommit. He guided the spoil cleverly down. And now Blitzhubs, that may be a, a little too much to try. A, a dinky little left footer. But Narkel recovered it with good effect to Cameron, who had to instinctively handball and then hope. Crouch sends it to Kilda's way. Sinclair will be right up there in their best and fairest, folks. Took the extra run and the extra bounce and thumped it deep. Oh, good Kane, who's outstanding with a contested defensive mark, shows it again there. Yeah, it's a great win. He's actually one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders in the competition the last few weeks. He's, uh, he very rarely loses a 1v1. Now, Max Kick too, contest a mark early in the game. Cameron, who's happy to get right up the ground, pokes it successfully through to Myers. And then what? The run and the handball and the share to Cameron. We kept on coming. It got a little bit awkward. Guthrie just over to eke a handball out. Now Parfit. So it was a slower play for the Cats in the end on the bounce. And Mason Wood getting back with some reinforcement from Crouch. Slightly misplaced ball. Jones, outstanding courage. At least slow the Cats up. Nevitt for the fumbling Duncan. Advantage again. Never who was the sub in his debut last week, but showed plenty with 15 touches. Close, a little pop pass for Myers, and then there's Tui on offer. Well, you, can see Paddy, Sorry, Louis. you see Paddy Ryder just covering off Tom Hawkins, expecting him to be the go to. Myers with the setup. Who's going to fly? It's Blitzarves in amongst three Saints who use their numbers. What would be concerning Brett Ratner is the ease that John are moving it from end to end. 50% uh, of the time now, they're getting it up into their forward line. Wilkie thumps it back to the wing. Again, Geelong have the extra there, and De Koning almost held it long enough. Not quite. That allows some possibilities for the Saints, and that's shut down. Ross copped it from Atkins. Great aggression. Important player this week with Buse out injured. Stewart hooks it back. No, it wasn't the contact he was after all the service for Jeremy Cameron McKenzie. 11 to 5, the inside 50 count in favour of the Cats. The lead is 9. Patton, considering carefully all the options, tries to be as risk averse as he can to battle. And then a little bit of overlap run. As he trots out and drives on to Koning again. He's surprised everyone as he really barely touched it. Higgins, was he pushed in the back? Yes. Zach Guthrie mowed him down, but fell into his back. That's, that's a better example of what Brett Ratton wants, though. So that little flick handball to Patton just coming off the back half. We didn't see that last week, especially in the first half against Melbourne. Higgins uncertain. Kept it relatively low. The Cats defenders go to work. McKenzie tried to force the issue. Billings. Membry off the left boot, gave it a thump. And all he succeeded in doing was thumping into the post, unfortunately, for the Saints. There's no time to rest either, straight in. He's not allowing St Kilda to set up. But you're right, Brandy, I think the challenge for St Kilda is to flip in and out of quick play. Geelong do it so well, right now they're possessing the ball, but they understand when they get an opportunity to go, they go. Now Tom Hawkins getting booed by the Saints fans. Yeah. Too sure about that, huh? Sure, it's not the 2009 a poster, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Grand final, all these years later. Yep. Cats maintaining yep. possession. Yep. Selwood as well receiving it. Atkins, Tui. Again, excellent progression from the Cats. And Tui had a lot of room to work out where to go next. Cameron and Wilkie, this is shaping as some sort of battle. And the early points, perhaps, with Wilkie. Still too easy. The way John are moving from defence to attack. So can the Saints do the same? Gresham restricted, force fed that down to Crouch, whose reflexes were outstanding, and now Billings patrolling that wing or half forward as the mark. Just had to pause a little longer than ideal. Well, this will be their challenge because Collett Jasney and De Koning have matched up on King, so you do need to find different avenues. Battle, he hesitated and then he miskicked. And now Connor in the right place as it turned off. Guthrie. 
Just his third disposal. Duncan's racking them up, though. Possession seven. Where to next? No real tall targets for him out this side of the ground. He's put his faith in Nevitt and Stengel. We're happy to just keep the ball moving forward, though, Hutter. So, in the past, we've seen Geelong happy to chip around and just control the ball. There's no doubt it's been a progression of their game style. They might still take a lot of marks at times, but they're happy. They just want to keep the ball moving forward. Well, it gives them that option too, doesn't it, to go back to that old style, which was pretty ingrained. Selwood again for Hawkins. Engaging was Howard. He's taken the mark. Myers flies back to goal. He hasn't kicked a goal this year. He's about to. That is a great kick. If he had gone to the left-hand side of Myers, St Kilda had a covering defender. He would have hit Myers and spoiled that ball. That is... Hope he didn't overthink that. <laughs> He's kicked the goal. That is great football IQ. And another good example is why quite often forwards are the best kick to other forwards because they understand obviously where the best position is or where the forward wants the football. Just have a look at this by Tom Hawkins, who's... Not sure where he drinks the fountain of youth or what he's drinking, but uh, he's unbelievable. Great kick. Yeah, you're right. That, that angle probably doesn't illustrate how good the kick was. You're right, it was McKenzie on the other side. You can see him coming down there, so he tried to, to match off the corridor position. But even a kick prior to that, Selwood's kick to Hawkins. He just gave it enough air so Hawkins could actually work off his direct opponent, come back and mark the ball and continue on with the play. Had five behinds for the year before that, Brian Myers. Now he has a goal to his name, and the Cats get out to a 14-point advantage. Their greatest of the game so far. Great work from Ryder to Ross. Scrappy old ball. The fighters at ground level. Long did really well. Gresham to the outside. Billings restricted, but found Mason Wood on the curl. Marshall trying to work to the front. Great work to Conan. Clean spoil. Narkle had the responsibility, and Atkins... Gave him the way out towards Guthrie. So they actually look at St Kilda. It's a low-pressure game. St Kilda going at about you know, 175. They need to be up around 190 for the way their team's built and their DNA and the way they play. So they need to ramp the pressure up. Seven tackles in this first quarter for them is not enough at the moment. Marshall got the tap. Now the work underneath begins. Steele trying to impose himself. Hasn't really been able to so far. Just a... A couple of possessions for Jack Steele. Hello, just a bit of news down here on the Geelong bench. Stanley's gone down into the rooms. Has been down there for about five minutes. Blitzarb's obviously rucking. Haven't seen Cooper Stevens warm up yet, so just keeping an eye on that one. one way, thanks, Moons. One way or another, it's coming back. Stevens, who made his debut last week, but with the two experienced players coming back in the team. He's the medical sub today. Is Stewart got a big piece of that, but once he didn't mark it, there was a big opportunity for the Saints on the floor. O'Connor, Dangerfield, just a hack kick, but a pretty good one under the circumstances. And now Hawkins lends his weight to the situation to Guthrie, to Myers. They picked their way out. Atkins, an aggressive line. He's asked a lot of Cameron at a real disadvantage and Wilkie. Tom Hawkins is travelling the fair way up the field. Just wonder Dougal Howard's very quick. Just wonder if he's trying to take him out of his comfort zone, get him up the field. Stanley only back for, after that ankle injury, of course, so we wonder if it's still a problem for him. Sharman. Guiding kick. Ryder. Yeah, clever kick. And I think that's what St Kilda need to do. So Geelong are happy to have shots wide because they cover the corridor so well and I think that's what St Kilda will have to accept in this early part of the game when they can't get access to the corridor they'll have to go wide and try and hit the scoreboard from that period of the of that part of the inside 50. So Paddy Ryder already has a goal and they'd love a bit of individual brilliance here from the experienced Ruckman. Pushed it well across. Comes off hands. Rucks who's up. Jeremy Cameron is the leading disposal winner for Geelong. That's an unusual sight. Marshall had the better of the tap. Crouch has had the most possessions for the Saints. Cats tried to scoot away. Parfit for Narkel. Couldn't quite get the clean possession he craved. Instead, Steele got a little wayward. Sinclair fashions 
A decent kick for Billings. Found some form in the VFL. 30 disposals and a lovely long goal last week. And he was ready to come back. He's a beautiful kick. Right towards the full forward area. Off hands. Stewart confronted immediately by Wood. Close. He had to wait for it to bounce. It could have been awkward. It wasn't. Selwood knew what was closing in on him. Now Guthrie, too well aware of what's there. Has he done enough? Did he have prior? No, is the determination. Sherman showed determination as well. Good saves. Didn't really want it back, and that's why he got the cattle from Steel. Geelong have got a lot of players around this contest. Uh, they've only got three forwards back. Guthrie working overtime. Golf to the tackle. Pay it, pay it, we heard. Yeah, good call. And this is an important kick from Jones. So you can see O'Connor back there just zoning off. Blixarves will have Marshall and even Stewart deeper. Max King's on the bench at the moment. The two Ruckman are there. And one of them's Rowan Marshall. Oh, so close. No call on the tackle. And Markle more than happy to walk over. That's better there by St Kilda. Lock that ball in the forward half. Stop Geelong from moving the ball from one end of the ground to the other. Repeat stoppages works. And they've had some chances. They've got their hands to the ball a few times. Ryder, the blitz arps. Ryder, beautifully to actually get the tap, but it went straight down the throat of the cat. And O'Connor clears for Dangerfield, who wasn't far off being out of grasp the mark. And what I love about the Cats also is they've, they've done their work around the stoppages, understanding where Ryder and Marshall need to hit. And they're getting right in that hit zone. So, yes, they're losing majority of the taps, but their clearance work has been first class. Winning the territory at the moment, the Saints, as we said, but not converting. Let's have to Guthrie's, to Selwood. Had a look at Narkel, decided to go off the left, heading for Dangerfield. Great battle of strength against battle. Hill stripped of it, but got enough. Parfit chose Zach Guthrie. And that's a fluky ball. Its trajectory went every which way there. Tough one to read. Howard turned instinctively. It could have been flirting with danger. Wood with sure hands. And they work their way out. Advancing along the wing. Good touch from Steele. And memory takes the mark. King's back on the ground. He points to where he wants it. Stewart! Jeez, that's a poor delivery of King, hasn't he? How many times has the ball been on his head? Yeah, and he probably had better options memory then. Probably could have ran it by hands or certainly the short kick just to bring the Geelong defenders forward. We know how well they set up behind the football as a team defence. Cats by 14. Blitzars to Selwood. Marshall. Again, difficult ball to read. Oh, long copter, but he's tough. Charmant. Memory. Couldn't quite find the footy when he wanted it. Better the second time. Sinclair spears it low. Doesn't quite get through to King or Narkel left it behind. King tried to edge his way through. And you can see the result is a minor. So how's Brett Ratton? We'll get an update from Moons on, on Reece Stanley. What, what can you tell us there, Moons? Well, he's just come, just come back up as we saw him on screen there, Hutto. So doing a little couple of walkthroughs now, run-throughs. Seems to be OK. How would Brett Ratton be feeling as we head towards quarter time, do you think, for the well, way the game's looking? Well, he'd be happy the way they've stabilised it in the last five minutes especially. Close. Combat in the air. Selwood, unflustered, through the middle, close again. This is where the Cats could be a gathering storm. Guthrie to Cameron. They did enough behind. McKenzie now challenged by Tui as he gets close to the line and dribbles over. Obviously, you need to... Uh... Start to capitalise on the scoreboard, though, with that uh, territory dominance. So, I well, think they, they, they've got the game back at least even again. It's restricted uh, Geelong's ball movement. Now yeah, they have to get to work around these stoppages. So, Hawkins not doing the ruck work inside the forward 50, preferring to stay back in the square. Blitzarves couldn't really release it after grabbing it. There's no way out there. Look at the St Kilda numbers hunting. This is a danger, dangerous period here for the St Kilda defenders and midfielders. And be careful, especially watching Stengel. Look at Parford off the back of the stoppage. I wouldn't be leaving him there inside 50. Not a Even lot of two, isn't it? And they get away. That was the kickback. 
Atkins memory somehow squeezed a handball out. Atkins copped it. Gresham went back for help, but Knuckle sneaks in. Collar Jasnik to close. And it just wasn't quite perfect for the Cats. Ross had a cool head. Marshall just nibbled the tiniest of kicks to Patton, who takes the mark. And a deep breath for the Saints. Seemed devoid of obvious options, so just plays it out wide to relative safety, although it turns out it goes on the full. So the Cats will get one last hurrah. And uh, not an ideal kick, obviously, from Parfit. So maybe it's St Kilda who has time on their side to try and get the late goal before quarter time. He couldn't keep it in. Rucks. Rowan. Mark. Blitzar still carrying the guys. ruck low. And has the hit out to advantage. Four to one. Can't make it a fifth. McKenzie, that was interesting. Selwood knew what to do, which was to put a fist into it as the clock counts down. It'll be hard to go from one end either end at this stage unless they get a mark right now right on the siren Higgins not quite maybe an extra second and paid that mark gee I actually thought he marked it no no yeah, the siren went, yeah. okay so there's your score at quarter time some exhausted players the ball for part of the quarter was pinging from one end to the other then it got a little bit more stable the Cats though have an advantage they lead 4-3-27 to 2-2-14. Absolutely, Moons. Yeah, great to see. Looks like he's dragging him a little bit deeper there. It's obviously challenging to get one-on-one -on -one contests against the Geelong defence. They work so well as a unit. Second quarter from Marvel Stadium. Cats by 13. Ryder climbed high, but didn't get the timing right. Gee, Crouch is really thriving at the moment. Duncan had the slight butter fingers, and now under pressure, Zach Guthrie. Is the ball under there somewhere? advantage. Chris Scott talked about De Koning as being a natural defender as a kid and he alluded to the fact perhaps that he played on Max King as a kid. Well it turned out he hadn't or at least nothing that anyone could track down. I think it was, it was the likes of of, uh, of King rather than actually having any matchups against him because they were in different draft years. King of course was injured in his draft year. But he, uh, he, made he, progress. He, he didn't give you a bum steer did he Scotty and you went spent the whole week studying well, trying I, to find the vision. I don't think I was the only one who was looking for it. <laughs> Just give a little whack. <laughs> Isaac Smith and here is De Koning, fresh from a career high 17 touches yeah, last five. week. Five. Up along the wing he goes. Hawkins and Cameron both there and Sinclair. So they're able to hold their ground. The opponents of the two Geelong forwards, which gave the access to Sinclair. What a season he's had, whether he's been in the middle or back across half back. Places this down the line, and King got some hands on it. Zach Guthrie over the top, scrapping with Long. It really looks with, with the deconing, you know, play holding the ball here, the deconing and King matchup that it's forward v forward. They really just back themselves in the air. They try and read the ball flight quicker than their direct opponent. And especially De Koning's not afraid to fly. Oh. Wow. An ugly kick on the way out. He's perhaps fortunate the proximity of Dangerfield to steal. We had the prior opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and out the window there. Dangerfield, yeah, it's a challenging kick for his teammates down the line. Blitzstar's made a wonderful right effort it. just to make a contest. Just half that contest. Yeah. Magnificent. Otherwise, that ball's peeing down the other end. Fantastic by Blitzstar's. That's going to incense the St Kilda strong crowd as that wasn't paid holding the ball. Stengel. Not the best contact. Oh, oh gee, it worked back late. Webster with a big roll on Toss and Stengel, so Webster had his hands full, especially in the first quarter last week with Cozzy Pickett. He would have been having nightmares at quarter time. But uh, he was able to sort of level the playing field or certainly balance things up after that. Webster played the least amount of minutes in the first quarter for the Saints, but he's out there now, and so is Wilkie. Stand. McKenzie. Staying on that city wing. Crouch with 12 disposals 
easily leading all comers as far as disposals are concerned. Marshall powerful in the air, but... He's got to take that. Yeah, didn't finish it. Atkinson oblivious to the pressure. Found Isaac Smith. Thought about it just for a fleeting moment. Zach Guthrie, better contact on the kick that time. Oh, that is... Yeah, it's hard on Wilkie, so he ends up behind the football, thinking Rowan Marshall's going to take that mark very quickly. Geelong pounce on the mistake. They get it back into the corridor, which we saw in the first quarter. And they go to Cameron, who just streams across the field better than any forward in the competition. Five goals last week. He kicked four and one in his two contests against the Saints last year. Jeremy Cameron missed a shot early. That's touch and go. And it's just the wrong side of the big stick. Yeah, I'd be very conscious if I was Wilkie, keeping an eye on the corridor or the outer side, playing with Jeremy Cameron. Battle for Wilkie again. No issues to get to half-back for Billings. And then over to Hill. He straddled the line effectively so far. All the way to the wing for Steele. Marshall, Ryder, King, Sharman, they're all down the line. I mean, they're not even looking into the corridor, so you would imagine Brett Ratton at quarter time has said, we need a little bit more safer ball movement. Jones does have a glance, and Sinclair's hair was easy to spot. Back to Jones, challenged by Selwood. Ball stripped in the tackle. And it came out. Jones will... Won't die wondering. Takes them on. Great injection of energy. He should be for the Saints from here on in. Ryder. Let's say coming back late. There's Jones again. Head down, trying to burrow through. He's doing well, Blixavs. He's clearly giving away height and maybe some body strength, but... Selwood just edging it forward. Sinclair continually getting to the right places. Takes the mark. Possession 11, not his best kick. Well read by Puff. You see, even on that play there, you've got an opportunity to use the turnover and go against the traffic. They're just playing too safe at the moment for me, St Kilda. Wasn't a great kick for Selwood, though. And Crouch to Jones. Neat footwork, not once but twice. Into the middle. Patton. Here comes Marshall. Got it. Well done. He dropped there. Well, relatively easy contest to mark on the wing moments ago, but he's made up for it there. That is a great pack mark in amongst a couple of Geelong defenders. And they need they need goals from their ruckman today. So Marshall and Ryder will be out there. They'll rest as full forwards. So they need to be able to hit the scoreboard. We saw Ryder kick the first goal of the game. Marshall needs to join him. Kick two straight last week. Has five straight for the season. To cut the margin, back to eight points. And that's precisely what he's done. All right, some reward for the Saints. But a very uncomplicated kicking style yep. when it comes to set shots. Yeah, just run straight, low ball drop. I wonder he's got, what did you say, six, six straight, straight shots. Answer, but you're right, this is a little bit of ruins here from Jones. So he draws the players in. Then they get that deeper inside 50, I think, on too many occasions in the first quarter. They tried to hit that shallow one because they're worried about the Geelong defender zoning off a little bit deeper. But this time Marshall gets his hands. The ball gets a little bit of separation from Collar Jasny. And that's the matchup they need to target. King's not getting what he wants against Deconi. If it's the Marshall v Collar Jasny, that's the one that you need to target if you're a Saints player coming inside 450. Both sides turning it over in this second quarter so far. The Saints hit the scoreboard. Emboldened by that, perhaps. Gresham to steal. Sinclair devastating. Off half back. Marshall's in the frame again. Collar Jasny outsized, as we've seen. To Koning. Delayed the give to Stewart. The boundary was an option. It was cleverly played. But that's that's another mini win for the Saints. They get it in there. Absolutely. It is. Look, look at Tom Stewart. You know, he's had an impact in that first quarter at the eight disposals. And Cooper Sharman just starting to hover around him. I wonder whether he's been given the role. Just keep an eye on Tom Stewart. Don't let him run around on his own and take uncontested marks. O'Connor just fought his way through. And let's throw in. Who's up? Rowan, are you up? Grace, Zach, Rowan. Here, Grace and Rowan. Right, just staying about 10 metres behind the two ruckmen here. 
Marshall hits to the front. O'Connor worked off him well. Tried to brush two tackles and paid the penalty, which is significant. Well, they've ramped up their ability to keep it in the forward half. Certainly the pressure and the, uh, from St Kilda is a lot better in the last 10 minutes of the first quarter, Louis. It's a good example. Which is good follow-up, isn't it? So from Marshall there, then Grisham. Grisham was the, the smaller type of forward that was on the move through the stoppage. Saints haven't beaten Geelong since round 14, 2016, as the footy world got to know about the talents of Jade Gresham. A goal here, and they'll be back in the heart. He can't quite get the shape right. Nonetheless, it's only seven points the deficit. Outside five. Guthrie. Started to find the footy late in the first quarter. There's an avenue through centre half back, and there's Joel Selwood. Continues on that same line. Kept it short for Cotter Jasdy and then Tui. Riddles loose on the wing. Now Stengel's the next option. So an encumbered joy. I've got it to half forward. Sates so getting their numbers and size back. A right yeah. steal. Yeah, the better application from the Sainz in the last 20 minutes of this game now to cover up those. We'll certainly cover up the Geelong ball movement, the ease in which they moved it from defence to attack. Zach Guthrie's got some issues. Mons will keep an eye on that. Great right leadership there by Jack Steele. Stanley slugging it out with Marshall. Hacked forward by Tui. The hopeful Saints fans call for <laughs> deliberate. And they're disappointed. Already providing a great soundtrack to this afternoon's round nine clash. Saints coming off a couple of losses. Geelong have gone win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. Holding the man. St. Kilda. <laughs> Tom Hawkins has had to train himself not to give that look on his face that we've been so familiar with over the last decade of just <laughs> incredible. The death stare. Yeah. Battle thumped it just a metre too long for Charlie. Charlie, and it's Colin Jasney stepping in. So Tui just popping up at half back after he was at right half forward a moment ago. Yep, change of his mind in the end. It's a handball, knowing where to go next, though. Knocked out Collar Jasny, and that's not the best of delivery forward for the Never. He's probably finding second up a little bit tougher to get amongst the action. So often the case. And Wilkie. Such a reliable defender he is, he and Howard as a team back there in this year battle. Tools are doing the job by and large. Wood. Play on was the call. Stengel. Try and tidy it up for Geelong O'Connor. They were coming at him. Wood probably overcommitted. Which meant there was less resistance going forward. And Hawkins takes the mark. Not sure about that transition all the way to the other side of the field. That switch kick. It's too long. So too killed out the opportunity in the open corridor. Yep. Back to Hawkins again. Reese Stanley lifts up and can't finish it. You know, you're right. If you if you want to switch the ball, that's really a way to catch the opposition out. It's got to be either a short, sharp switch of the ball, and you've got to get to the open side pretty quickly. That's without a goal through the first 11 minutes of this second term. This is one where you see Isaac Smith wrapping on his left. Hawkins brings it down. Floki ball picked up by Selwood. He pounced, fired, and missed. Leading possession winner for Geelong. For, uh, coming back from injury today, 11 disposals. Well, twice he's been good first up already, coming back from a spell, oh, yeah. Joel Selwood. What often the older players are. Game 341. Back to the wing, memory. Saints fans thought he was shoved. O'Connor, Collar Jasny, carefully to Duncan. Waits for the lead. Guthrie takes it. Hawkins is going to have to double back to the square. Or Shepard it through. Tom's on his knees. He's thankful for the result. And the Cats able to utilise that open corridor. Turn the ball over at wing. Quickly get it back into the corridor. Don't switch it all the way to the other side, as Louis was just speaking about. And then attack inside 50. Again, football IQ from Tom Hawkins. We know he's... 
an experienced player. Had a great kick in the first quarter to advantage side of his teammate. This one could have easily given away a free kick there with a heavy bump on Dougal Howard, but just nudged him out of the way. He knew it was going to carry. You're right. That, that's really been the difference, hasn't it? And especially this quarter when, when St Kilda have turned the ball over, they've gone back towards the traffic. Yet when Geelong get the opportunity straight to the open side, a couple of really handy ball users in Duncan involved. Especially off turnover. Quick off turnover, get the ball to the open side. Give yourself some scoring opportunities. So a goal each, decisive tap from Ryder, but there was three cats to choose from. Dangerfield, Selwood knew that Duncan was flashing past, and now Blitzars with the kick into the 50. Took his time, not really to the advantage of Cameron. It might slide through. This is right. One for the reviewers. I believe it's a goal, but it just confirmed it came off the attacker's boot. Score review. Umpire's call is a goal. Please confirm what the touch is. Review underway. Cameron gets a boot to it, does he? It's a Saints foot, isn't it? Looks like a Saints yeah. foot. Point there. Yeah, I would think so. Review complete. Looking at this angle, we can see the ball has made contact with the St Kilda defender's boot last before crossing the back of the goal line. Decision on scoreboard. Yeah, so they, they get away with one there, but the, the issue right now is Mitch Duncan off half-back. I mean, he, he's just got too much time and space linking up. So when there's a centre bounce or the ball is in play, as we see it behind there, someone has to be responsible for him. Well, Long's the one that's going to him at the start of every bounce at the moment. Well, he's going to Long at the moment, Louis, and you're right. You've got to put time into him and Stewart. They're the two boys that you really got to put some time and make sure that they're the ball carriers for Geelong. Yeah, Long's falling asleep too many times. Howard makes the assessment. Cats covering most bases. Takes the wing line, so King has to fly, and he did it well. Member is able to sneak away, but he didn't see him. Instead, he went short on the inside to Ross, who's dropped the football. It's just a young player. So you take contested mark on the wing, you need to know that you'll have spare teammates in the direct line behind you. So, yeah, that with experience, that'll come. Max will realise that... He'll have teammates out the back. Smith decides not to take the kick inside. Instead, it's O'Connor with a different view for Stanley. Wood knew it was coming. Stanley takes it out. Yeah, because a, a guy like Max King, he'll know that you know, he draws opposition defenders. So if he takes contested mark, it won't be just against his opposition player. There'll be two or three players there. So it's an opportunity for teammates to sneak out the back. He needs to swivel onto his right foot. And whack that to Tim Memory, it was all on his own. Ball hit the ground, neither Ruckman getting a tap. Hawkins crowded out, Hill. Serious fight for the ball, Crouch, Wood. Shut down by Cameron. And then Cameron goes again with his trademark aggression. Wilkie thinks it's funny. Uh, good follow-up, you love seeing your key forwards in that position, but this is an opportunity for a left footer. So this is how Geelong set up their stoppages. Left footers this side, right footers the other side. So watch Cameron. I saw a classic example of that last week, didn't we, with Isaac Smith. He wax to the inside. Instead, it's Howard. Long couldn't get there, but there was some body work and some hanging on. So it's a Saints free instead against Guthrie. Still love to see, Geelong have done a really good job to slow St Kilda's ball movement down and keep them skinny. I still like to see them be a bit more braver. Billings travels that out of wing again to Koning, showing his marking prowess. Just couldn't resist the quick hand pass. And O'Connor gets past, takes them out wide. Guthrie, maybe not the best decision, Dangerfield. Had no room to manoeuvre. Yeah, but that's OK. They're still taking the ball forward, so they're still putting St Kilda under pressure and forcing them to make really good defensive decisions. Just a goal each this quarter. 1-4 to 1-2 in Geelong's favour, to be precise. They lead by 15. Jones slaps it forward, but it's coming back. The problem is uh, Blitzar's rolling around to help the defenders and also Stanley at times. 
Stewart. Now Colin Jasny as they plot the path. As unfortunately for St Kilda, King had, with his effort had overcommitted, so he couldn't get back to tackle. Isaac Smith, the half forward. Knuckle looks around and says, yep, it's mine. And then go to the skipper. Play on. He's found a way to tackle Crouch. Unflustered Crouch. Ross. They just managed to work their way out. Now Battle gets a run of it. Tough, though, is the next handball. Straight away put his teammate under. All sorts of pressure. Patton. Great effort by Jimmy Webster, though. Yep. Good awareness. Could have, easy to get caught out where the opposition player switches angles and goes inside 50 to an uncontested mark. Great spoil on Selwood. Steele tosses it super high to Koning. No one could quite get the judgment right that time. Long batters it forward. Hairs on after it again. Atkins. Fluky ball. Steele to Koning. McKenzie. Steele. Good combat. He got caught high there, but the umpire was blindsided. He might have done his shoulder here. Oh, no. Here, guys. Keep the meter. It's like a new straight away. Oh, skipper. Looking forward to lose him. Well, a bit of bad news down here, guys, because Jack Higgins has just been subbed out. Young Marcus Hinhager has come in to the game. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they're not down two guys here at the Saints. OK, thanks, Burns. We'll get follow up on Higgins as to exactly what the issue is. Meantime, Ross sends it deep. Membry crowded out. Salmon with the handball. Gresham goes to work. Perhaps a little careful as he went for the short pass. Zach Guthrie convinces the umpire he was trying. Cam, Cam, let him run. Cam, let We've seen him. Worse, worse shoulders, haven't we? But reluctant to make a diagnosis, obviously, from afar. Yeah. But hopefully he can be OK. Oh, Gresham, always dangerous. Oh, King somehow marked it. Unbelievable. A chest mark. Maybe even lower than a chest mark in the goal square. Just as things seem to be turning against the Saints. That could be the tonic. Well, it was nearly an unre unrealistic attempt by Sharman, I think it was. King was the one on this occasion that stayed down. You're right, it was a movement. It was a ruck tap from Paddy Ryder, getting more aggressive with his ruck taps. Connection with Gresham puts it into the hot spot. This what Sharman at the bottom of the screen there. Go swear, guys, let's go. He was actually pushed by King out of the contest and then marks the ball himself. Well, I think Sharman may have the role on Tom Please Stewart, so in he's in doing his role. He's stopping the intercept marks, even though he may have given away, almost given away a free kick. Tom Stewart's been quiet, hasn't been able to impact this second quarter. He's very good in the first quarter. Two goals for Max King. It's a healthy mo. Kicked one goal five against Geelong last year at this ground. It's the last time the Cats played here. It's a rare visit. This is their fifth in five years. Knuckle to Parfit. It's heading Geelong's way. Progress slowed, though. Tui back to Guthrie. He gets a clean look. Went for Myers, an interesting choice. <laughs> Cameron had to wait a long time for that to come. And Battle sensed a bit of an opportunity. And now Sinclair reckons he can get involved too. Well, probably should have been a free kick to battle. Having been tripped up, but the play goes on. It does. The margin back at nine. Marshall down to Crouch. Carrying a big load with Steele off the ground. Parfit chips it to the space. Stengel got it! Haven't seen as much of him in this quarter. Although this, in fact, is going to be his fifth disposal, so... He's a great kick across the body. Not much Patton could have done there. You're right, Brownie, especially knowing that Geelong go wide a lot of the times. Patton had that covered. It was a kick across his body that caught him out. Kicked three goals, two last week. In fact, three goals the last two weeks. Been a huge plus for Geelong in the forward 50 and pushing up sometimes as that high half forward. Geelong by nine, Tyson Stengel. That looks in pretty good shape too. Every time they're challenged, the Cats have a response. Great kick under pressure. Pretty low scoring quarter. At the other end, the other small forward has had a fantastic year. This is Jack Higgins' incident. Jake Kolajasny, he's been subbed out with a concussion. 
So it's obviously a 12 day protocol. And will college jazz they have something to answer to? They'll definitely look at it, won't yeah. they? Coming in here, guys. That's a great kick by Parfum. And what a bonus for a small man like that about it. Have that ability yeah. above his head. So we're almost back where we were at quarter time. Geelong ahead by a couple of goals and a couple of points. Never out on the wing. Paid the mark. Dangerfield called for it in the middle, but strong enough to know. No, Paddy. Going into the pocket. Hawkins was a bit late to go that time. Howard didn't take the mark. Have had his arms chopped. Kenzie ran straight into Parfit. Never did well. The hands were slick enough. So it was Hawkins. Oh, oh I've seen that before from Ben Long. Yeah, Blitzhouse is winding up too. Long bounce back. Away goes Patton. Stewart. Charman's done enough. And they maybe whacked his arm. Ben Long lined uh, Blitzhouse up from 20 metres away. <laughs> Didn't go on to handle that hit. There is Blitzars, Dangerfield calling it on the other side of the ground. And it was almost set up. Atkins, not really to his team's advantage, sliding mark from Wood. They've got in the corridor if they want to use it. Searching kick for memory. Max King is pacing back around the 50. Has Stewart for company rather than De Koning. It comes a little unstuck anyway for the Saints. So we won't get a look at it yet, Max King. More switched on here, the St Kilda players, just to protect that corridor. Just to stall Geelong ever so slightly. So De Koning further up the ground, as you see here, getting involved. Smith was wrong-sided, but it doesn't stop him. Kick goes high. First to realise it really was Stengel, who came out ever so casually. Couldn't hang on to the mark that time. Sinclair. As again, they work that left half back flank. Cross. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't stop. Wood. He gave Atkins a look. He's had a couple of really important acts, Atkins. That one to get back and stop Billings from transitioning the ball worked really hard. Had a close out in the first quarter just down beneath us. Good start. He did a good job on Higgins earlier in the game. Yep. Lucky you can't get a free kick for descent against your teammate there. I don't think Membry was too happy with the surface he got. On that outer side, Wood batters it away. As the bloke sitting beside me would have got a feel against him towards teammates. And some of your Hawthorne teammates, he's pretty brutal on each other out there. It's a sign of a good team. Yeah, it would have been a hard adjustment. Wright has gone back to the goal square for St Kilda. Crouch's kick it won't arrive because Stewart was there and again he's drawn a free kick. Such as the danger he poses. Smith covering the territory. Stewart works his way out this side. Nevitt's going to have to fly against McKenzie. And McKenzie gets the plaudits from the Saints fans right down in front of him here on the wing. And Jeremy Cameron just lurking up the field, just trying to get involved in the game. He hasn't had a big day, Ali. One disposal this quarter. You oh. hear the sounds of bodies clashing on the wing. Jones being forced back, pinned down by the Cats. Windhager's on the ground. Came on as a sub last week and kicked a goal. He's straight ahead stuff. He might produce one here. Deep it goes. Ryder got crowded. Oh, long charging through again. Only knows one mode. McKenzie. Got the full wraparound. Play on the call. Zach Guthrie. Back for Marshall. The collect of the short kick was good to Gresham. Gee, it has been an intense game. I think pressure from both sides has been great. Gresham got past Guthrie. Did he get close enough, though? No. Too close for Blitzars, as it turned out. Who's caught and puts it down. It's ramped up, though. He's saying Kilda was ordinary in the first 10 minutes. John yeah. Rowe removed the ball far too easily. But since then, it's almost like Brett Radden called a timeout and uh, gave the boys a bit of a burst. And now they've really come to play. McKenzie. Membry looked the most likely in the pack. And it's Geelong at ground level. Stengel delayed the give to Duncan. 
Let's see their ball movement this time. Myers gets an awkward bounce. Handballed it away. OK. And then Stewart, as he just takes a little heat out. Oh, Selwood. Oh, no, the free kick is going to Long's way for Joel Selwood. That might improve the mood of the Saints fans. Here's Cameron up on the wing. Thought about the switch. Instead, he fashioned a beautiful kick for Cam Guthrie, who sees his brother. Hawkins waits in the square. The kick goes to young Nevitt. Oh, he just, just got a hand to it. Oh, he's got a free. So Mitch Nevitt hasn't kicked a goal yet. Just midway through his second game. Played the three quarters last week. Came on for Buse's concussion. Local boy from Grovedale. You're not helping, Tommy. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> but he soaks it all up. Soaks it all in. Goes back. Can't quite get the footy to obey. And, uh, good example of Geelong's movement. They, they don't switch all the way to the open side. They get it back into the corridor, and then they look for the open side winger who's floating into space. Great ball movement again. Patton with just over a minute remaining in the first half. Tui, stellar mark at half forward. And then off to Atkins. Never does deep again calling for the ball. A decision to be made perhaps by Zach Guthrie. He goes short to Duncan. Play on is the call. Can the Saints do something with it? They've got no one forward of the ball. They haven't, so Zach Jones will have to wait. And then the handball allows Nevitt in, at least to slow their progress. Crouch was careful and effective. Long to Jones again. And now battle, corner. And down the line as a result. Connor Jasny draws the free kick. That was their challenge because they had so many players trying to defend to stop Geelong from scoring. They finally did get an opportunity, but it was all Geelong. Instructions were to go down the line, but he goes short instead to Isaac Smith. Clock ticks. Not 15. Duncan. That good help behind. Stewart. Just a bit of teasing of Brad Hill back there. Yeah, but Brownie's right. I mean, they shift the ball so well, Geelong. And when you look further afield, the work that goes in. And they get safely to half-time, the Cats preserving their lead from quarter time. They outscored St Kilda 2-5 to 2-2. The Saints unfortunately losing Jack Higgins. Narkel is heading down to the rooms before his teammates with doctors in tow. So hopefully he's OK from a Geelong point of view. Maybe Steele as well. Yes, and eyes on Jack Steele. So some interesting questions, some difficult times for the Saints, but they're right in this game. They have provided a real contest, but it's the Cats with the edge. They lead by 16. Some big matches. Buckles OK. He's out there to start proceedings in the third quarter. Well, I know this, is, this is a Geelong side that will come out firing. They started the, the game really well. and They've got a lot of firepower. So, I mean, if you St Kilda, you love to attack that momentum with your own. So right is a player that I'm looking for to get really aggressive around the stoppages. Centre bounce to begin the third quarter. Ryder climbs into Stanley, put it down for Gresham to send them forward. Membry just strong at the front, couldn't get it to Winhager. And instead, Duncan clears the immediate danger for the Cats. It pitches on its end for Billings to capture. And then Geelong are well stocked back there. Although that's a terrific effort from Windhager. He really has just goes straight ahead, doesn't he? Yeah, Full of energy. Since he came on, uh, replaced Jack Higgins. And he stays in the contest and gets it back to Ross. That's an outstanding tackle. Somehow he got a one-handed handball to the teammate. And now Membry. McKenzie. As the Cats try and play catch-up. So that's Steele. He's out there at least starting forward rather than in the middle. Still he goes at it. Windhager. Steele couldn't find it underneath. Yeah, he's a bit unlucky. He just missed Gresham in the corner of his eye. Gresham would have waltzed into an open goal. But I like that the rider and... And St Kilda midfield is on the same page of that centre bounce. Well, on the move there. Sort of the fumbles for Duncan. And De didn't take the kick. Danger field. Immediately under the hammer. It's a second opportunity. Look at the collect. 
and thrusting the handball to the outside. Stengel knew how to step. Around Hill he goes. In between his two teammates, Sinclair anticipating successfully. Instead of it going one way, it's going the other way. Who's going to actually carry it forward? The indecision was there, crippling for a moment. They get through. Billings centered it aggressively he's, without a real plan. He's just got to hit the easy target, and that was steel. It was as obvious as you could see. Stewart picks out. Smith through the middle. He waited, he waited. Had it too long to give. Instead, he kicks to Hawkins, who slips. Howard got the bounce he was after. Tracked down brilliantly by Howard and must be rewarded. Yeah, good effort. Hawkins has lost a boot. It's been a good battle between Howard and Hawkins. There's been a couple of really good battles all over the field. That being one, De Koning and King the other. Just alleviates the danger for the moment for the Suns. Back to the wing. And Connor gets first player. Good win for Geelong, O'Connor versus Marshall. Atkins turns onto the left. Had faith in it. Standoff. Cameron. Wilkie. Wilkie kept it in. Sinclair. McKenzie. Hopeful more than anything. Tui churning out the handball to Smith. Windhager still doing it at either end. Catch just avoid the danger. And now Tui sliding in before it disrupted. Ross. And they've got into the clear at last. Gresham paces across half back there. The cupboard was bare. He's able to have three bounces just to buy himself some time and some hope going forward for the Saints. Sinclair, that's better. Now they're through. Membry wants it in the pocket. McKenzie to deliver. A great build-up. Fantastic kick to the open side of the opposite forward flank. A lot of pointing going on amongst the Geelong defenders, which is always a sign that we've got a bit out of kilter. So Tim Membry has the responsibility here. 12 goals, 10 for the season coming in. He kicked one goal, two last week. Kicked it behind earlier today. To cut the margin to 10. Sure-footed off the left. Just what the Saints needed, desperately. A great initiative from St Kilda off the half-back flank. So just trying to get some flow back in the game. But the change direction here. So it's a great pivot there by Gresham, who goes back into traffic. So then he forces St Kilda, his teammates, to go back the other way. And as we know, then you're going to have spare teammates out that open side because, of course, the opposition players have moved to the other side, thinking it's going to go in the predictable fashion. Uh, great change up there. I like that ball movement. Right on McKenzie to move forward and get it over the top to memory. You're right. It gives you a couple of things. By changing the angle of the ball and kicking it to the open sides, allows your forwards to reset and get forward of the ball and become options like memory did on that occasion. Yeah, because that, the, the reason St Kilda's reluctance the last couple of ball movements off half-back to kick it forward is because they're well and truly outnumbered by Geelong defenders. Third quarters have been St Kilda's strong suit. They've won seven so far this year. And they've started this quarter hot. Ross goes for King. Gets him. Again, Gresham goes back into traffic. So he, he wrong foots the opposition. Ahead of the football, Geelong defenders are going to be on the outside of the St Kilda forward. So when that St Kilda player wrong foots and goes back inside, takes the initiative, all of a sudden, then, the Geelong defenders are out of position. Good mark there by King. It becomes a big kick, this, doesn't it? It's a challenging one, as we know. He's got to kick it all of 50 metres. Not a lot of margin for error. The young man with two goals. This is his toughest shot of the day. Didn't give it a chance. But it's back to nine. Having a 2 7 record against Geelong. Such an important player, Jay Gresham. Six clearances so far today. Hutto, the most on the ground. Times up for Mitch Duncan. He kicks in for Zach Guthrie. Sinclair, Dangerfield, Selwood. Close. Ross puts the big ones in behind, but can't close the gap. He's still coming, this time at Tui. He handballs. Cameron wasn't necessarily expecting it, certainly not there. Tried to make do, Tui. Tied it up. Suddenly, he's within range. Oh, Zach Tui, what a star. What a player he 
he's been and still is. It wasn't perfect. It was far from it. Uh, Seb Ross just ran out of petrol tickets. Yeah, he thought he was going to give it off. He, he, he chased smart. from the forward 50 yeah. to the defensive 50, and, and he did a really good job in that. But you see, just there, he just didn't have enough. And you're right, he probably thought he was going to give it off. It's just a classy finish. Look at Crouch and Hill. They'd be outnumbered when Cameron fumbled. So Hill comes in there. He thought they might have done enough yes. when the Cameron fumbled, but... You've got to finish the... Well, you've got to complete the pressure, don't you? You know, you can't just presume that he's going to give that off. Poor old Seb's just come off for a rest, boys, and yeah. virtually walked over the line. He was cooked. An influential raise act to him. They're big numbers. 28 last week and nine score involvements as well. He's playing half forward. Huge numbers. Ryder down the throat of Jones. Windhager took Stewart with him and down... Appetite for the footy is strong from both teams at the start of the third quarter. Again, Geelong have had the answer. So this is where the game has lived, hasn't it, from when Geelong got the early advantage. Around about two goals. They can tend to be able to get back to eight points or so, the Saints. Hawkins had his way that time with Howard. If it's a, a battle of strength like that, you're going to favour the cat. Yeah, but you're right, Hutto. What Geelong do so well is they... They work out a, a trend really quickly. So St Kilda really two dominant centre bounds clearances. So they adapt, they change their structure in the centre bounds. It just doesn't allow them to have as much space as they did on the first couple of occasions. So Selwood's a part of that. Duncan's a part of that. They change the momentum really quickly. At disposals and a goal for Tom Hawkins. 23 goals, 14 coming in this afternoon. That doesn't deviate at all. Two goals quickly for the Cats. And they get to a game-high lead, despite all St Kilda's best efforts. It's a 21-point ball game. Yeah, yeah, but he's been very good in a couple of one-on-one -on -one contests today. Just uh, watch this. Uh, yeah, Joel Salmon, fantastic around the play, but cardinal sin by Dougal Howard here. He's played pretty well today. Engaged far too early for a player like Tom Hawkins. That's what he's looking for. He wants contact here. Engages far too early. Tom will do that every day of the week, just yeah. ease him out of the way. Yeah. So the first two hit-outs from Ryder were forward. They were centre bounce hit-outs. Yet the third time he gets that opportunity, Joel Selwood's onto it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well done to Selwood. Look at Tom Hawkins. So last month he struggled in those contests in the 1v1s. That's a really poor strike rate, but he redeemed himself in most of the aerial contests today. Game 3-11 for Tom Hawkins. Jones, his progress halted out of the middle. he will play 400 the way he's going. That's goal number 690. As he gets closer to, to the 700 mark. Nevitt, oh, right, an aggressive tackle. Good one as it turns out. He's comfortably the, uh, the biggest player to ever get to 400, I reckon. <laughs> yes, he would. That's, that's still a fair way off, though. <laughs> it just seems... Kick to Gresham. And important again, his 19th disposal. The width is on offer from Sinclair. Eyes up. Marshall is the prime target deep. He's just lagged the kick. Not for Sharman and Stewart. Got awkward for Zach Guthrie, as you saw. Long fires the handball. Jones has got it heading across the front of goal. And Blitzar doesn't mark it, but does get it to safety. Jones with 13 disposals. Crouch leads the way for the Saints with 22, and Stewart with 18 for Geelong. Marshall reaching over the top. Blitzhaus, nice handy work to Guthrie, and then Stewart. Couldn't have kicked it much higher. Selwood doesn't even try, really, and, and leap up for the mark. They better fight a good draw and get it out. for a rest. Good return today, Hutto. 15 disposals. Right up with a left hand. Duncan being watched carefully by Long. Just edged away there from Guthrie. Parfit will know how close the boundary is. Five clearances for Selwood as well today. The second only to Jade Gresham on the ground. 
And a lot of those would have been reading the opposition ruck tap, but right, I say he's gone forward again, so this is the Mitch Duncan type of area. Let's ask. Here's Tui, Crouch and Ryder. Danger field possession 14 coming up. Blitzarves again just alluding the danger. Averting it and getting it moving through Guthrie and Parfit. Myers had no awareness that Hill was there but still got rid of it when he needed to. Cameron, Hawkins is having a rest so it's Stanley coming up for Geelong as the target. Pat to Windhaven. At that time he's just held up in his tracks. Wilkie yeah. takes the kick and finds steel. And there's some options ahead. Ross was begging for it. Member is charging forward. They'll have to encounter some extra Geelong defenders. Sinclair gets to half forward and then pauses. And that wasn't what he was after, obviously. Narkel takes it and has Myers in his sights. Billings coming off the bench. Myers, it's go-ahead time for the Cats. And Smith will be happy to go along with that, you'd think. He waits. That's not going to be far enough, is it? Oh, it is. Bad turnover by Sinclair. About eight metres, but, but that's sort of been their issue, I think, yeah, Brownies. Yeah. The high half forwards are so high up the ground, they get involved through a piece of play, yet they've got no one to kick it to. It's always been an out number. So Mitch Duncan. 15 seconds, Jeremy. Just two goals for the season. And one of John's leading score involvement players just behind Tom Hawkins. Now he has the responsibility to kick a 50-metre goal. Just can't quite shake of the head. That kick probably went about eight metres. They've been hot on the 15-metre rule tonight. Stand. Wow. Oh. Just got a little untidy from the Saints on the way out. They've just got to dig in here. They yeah. came out with all the energy at the start of the third quarter. Yeah. As soon as that ball went out, Jeremy Cameron smiled because he knows he's an opportunity. Well, their normal 450 Ruckman's having a rest. Hawkins on the bench. Stanley taps it. Membry gets first play on it. To Gresham. Cats will be ready for the danger that might present. Steele and O'Connor. To Coney. Kept the ball high enough and away from the danger. Atkins attracted a crowd quickly. And so here we are with another ball up on the wing. Two goals to one for the quarter. Jake Gresham has seven disposals, make it eight in this term. Playing a stellar game, or memory got pushed. Kings one on one with Blitzarves this time. That's where it goes. King. Oh. Yeah, Brad Hill on the open side there, sliding inside 50. Memory just was so. Fixed on Max yeah. King, which you can understand, you know, a big key forward like that. Just couldn't quite complete the mark. You need to capitalise on these opportunities. St Kilda going inside 50. Marshall grabbed it. What to next? Dumped it to Jones. That'll work. Oh, yes, it will. That is a great goal. Great understanding, great teamwork. That's one of the benefits of having two... Recognise Ruckman, Marshall and Ryder. They can handle themselves with these around-the-ground throw-ups. On the same page there, that was clearly a set play. Jones gets on the move, which the strength of his. Ryder put, um, Marshall puts it down his throat. The Pixars didn't do much wrong. No. He, he was in the contest, he was physical, maybe gave his back a little bit, but it was just Ryder's strength. Parfit just for a split second got sucked into trying to tackle Marshall and that's the gap that Jones got to have a shot at the goals. Good finish. Yeah, he's a passionate young man. Well, I'd like having him back, Hutto. Yeah, great to see him back yep. enjoying his footy too. And enjoying his life. That's 16 point margin. Unfortunately, Jack Higgins sucked off with concussion early in the game as we've seen. So it's back to this two and a bit goals. Saints would love to chain up goals. They'll get their chance. Ross steady to the square. And Colin Jasney saves the day. Great play by Raul Marshall at the centre bounce here. May have, you know, the umpire could have almost paid a free kick. He quickly came across the line, shepherded Stanley really well and put it down the throat of his St Kilda midfielder coming through. So Marshall's been influential in the last few moments. 
Gatti with precision on the way back. Let's have a look at that. It's almost a block. It's right on the edge of a block. Now it gets a bit scrambly for the Cats. Webster. Will keep back to McKenzie. The left foot is all combining. None of them taking the kick. Still scrambled something forward. Long for Ross. Crowd can just sense that the Saints have dug in here as requested. They're doing their best to urge them on. Marshall against Stanley. Parfit had a look. There's nothing to his fancy. Coughed it up. McKenzie. Crouch for the hottest of spots. King with Atkins. Stewart. King gets bowled over. Steele. Mason Wood. Might feel he owes them a couple from last week with shots missed. That's the mark. Charman hangs on. Just the recovery. I mean, he was in that contest on the other forward pocket. Recovery to get back up and going. I understand that you might be needed again. Now he just needs to finish. It's good play by the St Kilda. Needs an IR forward. Skip back inside 50 and support that ground level ball. And it did hit. Kick four goals, one against Freo in round 23 last year in his last full game. He still knows where they are. And the Saints are making their charge. It's back to nine. And for reasons we've explained already, it now becomes about the next goal because they just haven't had to break this barrier of getting to within a goal and a half, but they've got another opportunity. Yeah, well, they've made the most of their opportunities the last five minutes, so when it looked like they were hanging on for dear life, their fingers were about to drop off the edge of the cliff. Zach Jones kicks a goal against the run of play, and Sharman makes the most of his opportunity, and it's game on. It's been the set of bounce stuff too, hasn't it? So that gives them the first opportunity to get the ball inside Ford 50. And then it's about trying to keep it in there. So Ryder and Marshall clearly look like they're on top. Mm. Ryder back into the centre bounce now. He's fresh. He's probably the best centre bounce rucker in the competition, the way he jumps. Consecutive goals for St Kilda for the first time. Stanley to Dangerfield. He'll realise the situation only too well. Hawkins is back on the ground. A lot going on before the ball arrived. Sinclair flushed the spoil, but it stayed in a dangerous position. Wilkie working tirelessly. Zach Jones working really hard. Yep. Second game back. Finding some fitness here at AFL level. And a good spread. Takes the mark. Left half back. And then... It's the full contemplation. Decides. Yeah, sure. He didn't really seem convinced about any option, but means he gets involved again. Great kick going the way of memory. College has to have to restrain himself. Here is King. Oh, he's got Billings. It's a long. He threads it, yes! Now the Saints fans are on their feet. Three in a row to the Saints. Chris Scott's got some thinking to do. And they're starting to run. The St Kilda midfielders and the high half forwards are getting up. Getting around the contest in the stoppage area, but then they're taking off. They're getting back inside 50 and equalising. It's a well done there. Kick was probably on the wrong side of King. He almost took it. But they really took off hard, these half forwards. Ben Long's one of those. So now, all of a sudden, you don't see this spare Geelong defenders. So you run with confidence, don't you? So you look up, you see 1v1. And as a high half forward or even a midfielder, you're able to to go forward inside your forward 50, understanding the ball probably coming to ground. But you're right, even that handball received to Jones just breaks open that play. They haven't had much of that. 11 entries for four goals, two in this quarter. All of a sudden, only three points in it. Perhaps left it behind initially, but recovered. And now Ross. King is going to fall short. What will the bounce do? To Koenig. To absorb the tackle. And the reading is that it was fair enough. Jay Gresham outstanding in this quarter. Eight disposals for the turn. 21 for the match. Jones. Maybe bit off a bit too much that time. They just need a bit of control here, Geelong. Just some, take some marks. Just take the sting out of the game. 
So he didn't seem completely convinced about the right option. A lot of Saints numbers there, as you can see at the back. Battle clears the path. An embry for Hill. To half forward, not particularly well directed. A low long squared. Close. The scramble is on, and it's mad. Free kick to the Saints. Well, it seems like everything's going their way at the moment, isn't it? Aggressive line from Windhager, Costa McKenzie. He's got Wilkie on the outskirts. Can the defender make good? Sets it up. The kick. It's fit for a king. Actually, the umpire, I think, wanted to blow out on the full. Is that the fourth boundary up I did? Yeah. It must have been close. He was in a good position. With the whistle of the mouth. There we go. So no one on the actual mark. You can see the cats are lined up. Being ordered where to stand from the umpire. They'll come for the lead. Oh. They almost stayed in. All <laughs> sorts of chaos. Good result. So now Ryder's in the run. It's going against blitz halves. This boundary throwing, so he'll have the strength. So Kuda players get on the move here. So Geelong need to defend hard. Watch the uh, watch the lane, the running lanes for Gresham. They're on red alert. Ryder to the back. Oh yes! Jack's back. Billings kicks the go-ahead goal for the Saints. He's at some quarter rider. And you just see there was a changing momentum or a changing attitude at the quarter time. But you're right, Brownie. Look at this tap. I mean, he knows where the midfielders will be. So oh. if it's not Gresham, it's Billings. It's almost like Gresham ran the decoy. Look at Gresham come through to the left there. And over the back option is Billings. That is a set play. And that's what you can do when you've got two dominant ruckmen, especially Ryder, who's fantastic in these situations. Against a, a hybrid ruckman, the greatest respect to Mark Blitzarves, you need to dominate the rucking contest. When you've got a player like Blitzarves who will dominate you around the ground with his athleticism. Maybe Billings heard the conversation between Gresham and Ryder and said, I want to be a, I want to be a part of it. <laughs> There it is, five goals, five from stoppages. Four in a row now. St Kilda take the lead for the first meaningful time in the game, but they want more. Ross, long had to turn around. Here's King. Rush him again to win, Hager, long. Got the call from the outside, Mason Wood. He fooled him, you know, and he was able to straighten up. This is a Saints blitz. Centre bounce dominant, Tullo winning the territory battle. And if I look down on the field, the uh, Geelong players, especially behind the ball and around the midfield, they're just starting to paddle a bit. It's, the, outs like the, it's, the, it's the outside, isn't it, Brandon? So yeah. when you talk about how they're winning it, yes, it's the rap tap, and yes, Geelong midfielders are trying to predict where the ball's going, but they've just found it really easy to go from the inside of the contest to the outside of the contest. Yeah, no doubt about it. And they've got some quick players, St Kilda. They get those high half forwards, and I think they've got their balance better now. Yeah, Louis. And now we know that was a centre bounce, so it's six ahead of the foot, six v six ahead of the ball. But uh, just feel like now they're getting up the ground, supporting, and then pushing back inside 50. Good finish by Wood. Cameron's like, had enough. He's he's put himself in the middle of the ground. Well, that last 10 minutes, yeah. so just they're, run, they're too much run for Geelong at the moment. It's a domination. Selwood, Jeremy Cameron off the right boot. Some respite. At least for their defenders, and an opportunity to score for Parfit. Hawkins in the right spot, but he had two to contend with, and Webster does what he needed to do. Move out. Move out. Sinclair has it, a responsibility. Careful path. You'd think it, at halftime, Brett Ratton would have instructed his players to, to take the game on a little bit more. More handball receives, more outside run. They probably went away from that in the second quarter, and that allowed Geelong to play their game. Steele keeps it close to the line. Stewart not quite. Blitzars, Dangerfield, Tui. No room to move at all for Geelong. Simple things like that. Cooper Sharman despoils Tom Stewart. We know they set up so well. Geelong with the intercept marks from that man. 
It's been quieter after yeah, quarter time. He's still had 19 disposals, but no intercept marks for the day. Now that's the critical stat. It's danger for this quarter, six disposals, but only one kick. Cats can't get the liberty they were enjoying early on. Again, they close in on Stewart. Penalised advantage, steal, thought better of it. Look, I think he's done a pretty good job, young Charman. Kept an eye on Tom Stewart. Certainly hasn't had the impact that we've seen previous rounds this season. Set sail. De Koning was able to release King. Gets there. Didn't take the market. Fell in the lap of King. Billings again. The central kick. Member it. Full stretch. Live ball in front of goal. Stengel. All hands on deck. Cameron had to release it quickly. It was far from perfect. Wood tracked it all the way with Smith. And the Saints fans are clapping everything at the moment. And why not? Well, the effort's there. And on the back of that, they're getting scoring opportunities. But even when Geelong try and transition out the other side, that's covered off by the work the St Kilda defenders are doing really early on in the play. Battle in the hands of the Doctor. Four and a half minutes to go. And what has been an outstanding third quarter for St Kilda. The two Ruckman have to chase on after it. Marshall was committed. Selwood to Nevitt. And then on the way out, Connor Jasney did enough. Stengel up along the wing. Dangerfield didn't hang on. And they brushed the tackle. Patton, Sinclair, an extra handball for the Saints. And then Steele. Bit of safety there in finding Webster. The defence has been good for Saints this quarter, hasn't it? Looks like. You know, Wilkie, Bradley Hill helping out down there. Sinclair. Six goal to two quarter. King flying for everything. Collar Jasny didn't know where to release it. He got run from behind. That's what he needed from Atkins. Throughout along the wing. Hawkins works his way to the front and onto the Sheriff. Pumps the handball, tries to get some run from O'Connor. To centre half forward at full stretch, Cameron couldn't. McKenzie to Hill. And the Saints dodge another one. And suddenly defence becomes an attacking opportunity. Numbers galore through the middle. Gresham made a bit of a hash of it, no matter. On he goes to Sinclair. They're an irresistible force at the moment. Membry, opportunities abound. Into the pocket, Billings against the post. Yeah, they would change angles this quarter much better, St yeah. Kilda, and maybe they're just running better and they're getting more options, but they've been prepared to get it back to the open side or switch back to the opposite side. Just felt like, feel like then Geelong aren't able to get themselves set behind the football. They are working overtime in defence, the Cats. Marshall, was he held at edges? Closer and over for behind. Jeez, Marshall and Ryder have been important in the last 10 to this game. And I think you can do that, Brandy, when you look down and your defence is having a good quarter. So they're winning more so than they're losing. So you can take the ability to get on the open side with confidence. 16-9, the inside 50 count in favour of St Kilda. Six goals, sweet, but a big quarter. No movement at all ahead. So Selwood has to be the marking target. Playing Rover with blitz arms. He has absolutely no idea where to go next. The insurance was danger field. Slipped. That's a sign of just where Geelong are at the moment. They're being hurt by the Saints. Sharman again. Blazers. It's a great example there of Dangerfield. He was surrounded by St Kilda players. And yes, he did slip over, but tell, you, know, you look at the TV screen and St Kilda just getting more numbers in the picture at the moment. But that was the one in the first quarter. They used the, used the corridor and now St Kilda have plugged that up. Henry worked the angle smartly. That's... Much harder to get out of defence at the moment for Geelong. Just haven't been able to get on the ball. I mean, minus 30 in uncontested positions, that's usually a strength of Geelong. It's halves in a tangle again with Marshall. Had the better of it. Parfit willing himself onto the ball. The match with desire by the Saints at the moment. Billings playing in front of Atkins. Checked him well. Got the handball to Crouch. It was probably their best in the first half. I think they've been... Uh, they've brought that number up, St Kilda. I, I think they've had that extra number or another number at the contest, at the yeah. stoppages. And I think they've just sort of been able to then work their way from that, from inside to outside that contest, Louis, and then quickly get the numbers and equalise inside 50. And back away again. Marshall. Outside. Good touch from Ross. Gresham still confusing them all. To full forward first to see it though is Stewart. He wasn't as clean with the mark as he normally would be, but it, there's no penalty involved this time. So Tui, a minute 44. 
Geelong's defence under siege in this quarter. Needing all their experienced hands. It's a tough one for Duncan. No one quite knew where it was going. Steele did. They load up again. Stewart. Oh, he's not quite on his game. Taking the marks. Membry. Great lunge from Atkins to save the day. And they dodge a very important and fully loaded bullet that time. How important was that tackle? Just, I think everyone thought Stewart was going to take the mark. But they have had so much work to do back there at the moment. Collar Jasny travels the wing. Oh. Webster right over the top as he flew the pack. Close was clever. Now, is that intentional? I think it is. It's part of yeah. It's good umpiring. A minute to go in the third quarter, which has already produced six goals for the St Kilda. They've done it again in the third term. King's coming. Crushing the pack to Koning, though. Stood his ground. Footy gets out. Dangerfield doing his best gets a bit of a push. It's been four goals from stoppage to St Kilda, Hutto. So Ryder and Marshall have been very influential. And the little blokes, Gresham, Billings, uh, Zach Jones been very good. Windhager's been very good. Getting to work around the contest. Not the best kick in terms of contact from Dangerfield, but touched over the line. But you're right. It's, it's been a really good move from the coaching staff to bring that high half forward so you let Duncan be that spare just sweeping the stoppage and put the high half forward into the stoppage knowing you've got a dominant ruckman use the numbers Selwood somehow Hill on the counter for us down to 20 is there time there surely is Ross gets it forward Membry okay that's a great it's exactly what Louis was talking about there that's a great example of I think the change that St Kilda have made at half time, bring that half forward up, get an extra number at the stoppage, and then dominate your way out of there through run and carry. And then the Geelong defenders are in all sorts, then they don't know whether to come forward or to go back, and memory ends up in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Saints fans are ecstatic. They've seen six goals in this third term. But they'd love... More than anything, one more on the siren. And their hearts are full right now. They lead by 16 points. Seven goals in a devastating third quarter. And Marvel Stadium is alive as they hit the final break. 20 inside 50s. And St Kilda Avalanche. Cats had no answers, but they do have a little bit of time now to get some old heads together. They've just had their highest scoring quarter since 2017. Seven goals for. And that was against Richmond. We all remember that night. The Tigers ended up winning the flag. And how did they do it, Brownie? Well, it was a dominant display around the football. Marshall and Ryder were dominant. Uh, I think this last stoppage example sums up what happened in the third quarter. St Kilda brought an extra up around the stoppages in that third quarter. Duncan then all of a sudden is in no man's land and they're up at a bypass. You see him on the left of the screen. He has to push forward. And then memory is allowed to get into one-on-one -on -one situation. So I think that turned the game in the favour of St Kilda. Chris Scott's only ever lost once against St Kilda. 11 wins, one draw and one loss. The last term is underway. The Cats have had a chance to try and get their game in order and they can show it now. Dangerfield deep. Hawkins is there, but outpointed again. Battle has been patched up. Takes the first intercept of the quarter and off to Sinclair. And the Saints through Patton. Driving kick. Another Atkins and Long's head. Atkins wriggles clear. Guthrie not as sure handed as he would have expected. Jones, O'Connor, it takes a turn to Gresham. Guthrie on the counter to Stewart. Pistons out the handball to Dangerfield. And now Smith, length on the kick. Hawkins, I thought he had Howard where he wanted him. It's yeah. a free kick again, and Hawkins is hurt. Just to complicate matters. Just yeah, it was, a, it was a genuine one on one. So the ball movement is reminiscent of what we saw in the second quarter. So to be able to get the ball back through that corridor, involve Isaac Smith, get more speed on the ball, gives you a genu genuine one-on-one -on -one forward. 
couple of occasions it's went to this contest. First occasion there was a St Kilda player came over and helped. This one he just didn't have time. Well, they really didn't touch the foot football in the third quarter, did they? So St Kilda had really twice many disposals, General. Two goals straight. You wouldn't have to tell Tom Hawkins the importance of this kick. And that's the, not the normal ball flight or the result you'd expect from there. An animated Chris got it three quarter time and he's still feeling it, I'm sure. He's turned 15 points in a rear. He can kick the left to right as well. Here's Chris Scott just firing up. Doesn't often do this, but oh, Hawkins has been gifted another chance here in front of goal. Mackenzie the culprit. I mean, you can understand the kick, but it didn't necessarily need to happen to such a dangerous part of the ground. Yeah, See Wilkie risky. there saying, go down the line, go down the line. He has shanked it, but no need for it. The forwards love this. An opportunity to redeem yourself within a minute. Saints have kicked the last six. Tom Hawkins. Oh, oh it's done again. It's yeah. worked its way back somehow for a very unconvincing <laughs> third goal, but they'll take it. Uh, that was a draw, had a kick to fade the first one. He's just changed it up. <laughs> Didn't look great off the boot. Uh, he'd have to kick him. So, yeah, just didn't need this. So, so Kilda's got all the momentum here. This definitely wouldn't be an instruction from Brett Ratton. Long just, switch. Yeah, no, long switch, dangerous kick. Just be prepared to go along down the line if you have to. And, of course, if the Cats can come back, Chris Scott will become... The record holder for the most wins. He's already in that position, tied with the great Reg Hickey. An incredible 86.7% winning record, Chris Scott. Automatic grandstand named after you. <laughs> Goes to the top, you reckon? I'm not sure. They are building a new one down yeah, there. They are. Guthrie. So they have the first in their back pocket. Now they're hunting a second. Danger field, a quick change of direction. Getting more ambitious, it meant that there was no target there as the ball landed. Apologies are um, made by the Cats forwards, Zach Tui in particular, who didn't get there. So a couple of good deep intercept marks taken by the Saints in this final turn. Battle, not quite. Atkins, Guthrie's charging forward. And he's pushed out. He only has a negative record against one coach, apart from Sam Mitchell, who he's lost to Grace. once out of one. Yeah. Yeah, Nathan yeah, Buckley. Amazing, yeah, Nathan Buckley. And remember, uh, Collingwood had good strategies at times against Geelong. They were always able to lower their eyes. We know Geelong's defenders used to go back, so Bucks coach well against them. It is extraordinary. Selwood, within range, just put it on the boot and hope for the best. Hawkins, again, has two to contend with in the air. But they are having a bit of time in the front half. Yeah, they are. So it's just building pressure now with territory. Max King and Rowan Marshall. Probably a bit harder for Marshall resting Ruckman. Max King needs to be conscious now to come up and support his defenders. Just give him a get-out option. He's now starting to come up. Changes up the kick to Billings. It was touched, but it ends up on the wing anyway. Marshall, King rises a fraction early. Long, didn't panic. Jones. Had a terrific run through. All these numbers out to the left. So what to do next? He shakes off Stanley. And he was just about to be pinged, but he got rid of it. Steel curls it around. Blitzarm's committed. Windhager. He'll take some stopping. Mackenzie Ryder. Oh, York the post. I mean, they did well to get a shot at goal. There was four Geelong defenders. Really good work by Zach Jones to try and run and carry been good in the second half, Jones. Yeah, plenty of run and carry, especially yeah. off half-back. That third term, he was important. So the umpire was thinking of blowing the whistle, but didn't. Stewart. They just edge it wide, and a little forward to O'Connor. He has knuckle. Gives to two. Got Guthrie to the left, didn't see him. Giant gets through. Ross with brute strength. Parfit doesn't turn to goal, and he gave it to Knuckle, who could just squeeze the kick. It's touch and go, it's Hawkins anyway. And now he's hurt his knee. Just jarred it, I think, on the landing. Back here, 
Smart kept them in the gun the second half, Hawkins. Three yeah, goals for the day. Yeah. That's a better connection. And with authority, he puts it through, and it's back to three points. The Cats have responded and responded quickly in the last. Yeah, so it's felt like a game, whoever is on top at stoppages gets ground position, but then certainly when the ability to move the ball up half back, and this individual play here to keep your strength through the through the tackle and then to keep running, provide options, handball receives. It's whenever a side has gone into their shell and gone into a kick mark game, the other side has been able to defend really well. You see here the little handball to Narkel. Just remember the third quarter, dominance around the stoppages by St Kilda. Clearly that spray from Chris Scott has worked because uh, Geelong have dominated the clearances in this last quarter. Certainly helped them with their territory. Look at that, 75% in their forward half. Half it needed the bounce of the ball, he got it. Stengel out to meet it, he bypassed in the end. Jones, hand pass to Gresham. Somehow he worked his way through the pressure in, then it was out. And now it's on the wing for Hill. Didn't like what was ahead particularly. Windhager makes an offer. More aggressive line is Crouch. Ryder is all on his own at the top of the square. And they finally spot him. He was there for an eternity. Great kicks there. Two fantastic kicks, both by the left footers. The last one, the money kick by Jimmy Webster. Just floated his way down off half back. First kick there by Wood. It was a great option. He had to hit it, though. Any mistake there, and that's going back the other way. That was a good completion there by Webster. So Paddy Ryder to try and take the wind out of the cat sails. Preserve this lead and in fact increase it. Kick the first goal of the afternoon. That seems a long time ago now. He stares this one down and kicks it. You just wonder where Reece Stanley was. I mean, from the centre bounce, St Kilda had the ball in their hand for that entire time. So you just see there, Selwood, right, he's, he's taking really care of him. He's turned his head a couple of times. Reece Stanley's just hanging out on the wing. Hasn't once turned his head to try and find where his direct opponent is. And there's Ryder popping up forward of the ball. Yeah, it's, you need a better awareness of that. see Ruckman as soon as the centre bounce is done one or lost they charge forward to really challenge the opposition Ruckman. Yeah, no matter who his man was whether it was Marshall or Ryder he just had no awareness of both of those men being in the Ford 50. The Saints most experienced player kicks the goal they needed but it's far from over. So it lags the kick. Battle anticipated well didn't mark. Sinclair feeling the heat which is rising at Marvel Stadium. Hands to mouth, you can see on the face of Wilkie. Uncertainty, nerves that are jangling around the stadium. Cats pressing again, there's an open goal square. Hawkins tried to get it to the outside. Still, Howard, slung, tackled. No call. They'll be lining up again, Hutto. You can see them all on the defensive side. It'll just be a wave. And he whacks it. Let's have to chase. Wood to McKenzie, turns to his wrong side. Nevitt pops up at the right time. Yeah, valuable football experience in the cauldron of Marvel Stadium. Saints fans have found their voice on the third. Try to inspire their team on. They lead by nine. Hawkins straight to steal. Dangerous kick, it's laced with danger. It fell nicely for Sinclair. Smart kick. Who said it's not a race? <laughs> Hill. Didn't press forward. Turns back through the middle. Windhager takes the mark. Across the ground, there's Saints galore. He chooses McKenzie. King is coming. He's demanding. He's ignored. To Crouch instead. Still Max King is there, being watched ever so closely by De Koning. Crouch will just set it up. And the young man and the old man, King and Ryder, came together. And Paddy Ryder takes the mark. Now the value of having two dominant Ruckman that can play forward. 
been able to hit the scoreboard today, both Ryder and Marshall. Ryder going for his third goal. This is to get us all the way back to where we were at three-quarter time. Paddy Ryder, 274 games, absorbs it all and just calmly pops it through. Hope you're enjoying the rights and Kelda fans. They're enjoying the rider. He's kicked his third, and it's back to 15. What I have liked since half-time, Louis, a little misdirection from St Kilda, the way they've moved the football. They haven't just gone in a straight line and allowed the Geelong defenders to set up. They've been able to change angles with the way they attack the 450. I mean, even the, even the kick out of half-back just went to an open space. They saw Bradley Hill running. What a race that was. Hill, Blixarves and Smith, three really good runners. And then, then to have a little bit of more composure, so you're right, change the angles further up the field to allow Ryder to set himself deep, to allow King to try and get a mismatch. He's had a huge game. Back to 15. How the energy levels. Still strong for Charles Selwood. Just... Hunt down, Seb Ross. Don't underestimate the value of accurate goal kicking. Seven goals, too, so they made the most of their set shots. St Kilda. Stanley gets the hit. Blitzarves is trying to get onto it. Crouch beat him to it. Patton back to centre half forward. Memory. King. He has some space ahead and to the side. He bides his time, and he'll need to a bit longer. Hill just pops it wide for Mason Wood. And now the kick comes into the 50 to Billings. It's not built up again. St Kilda didn't blaze away to an outnumber there. Geelong had two extra defenders back. They just waited for the cavalry to arrive and just pop into the holes inside 50 to establish this shot for Billings. It's good composure there by Hill. And his pre-season interrupted right before round one with a hamstring injury. And his time, he's back. He's kicked a goal already. It's not quite the shape he was after. And the Cats defenders do their thing. It's out of bounds. So, we can work around this. So far, so good for Brett Ratton in this final turn. A couple of goals each. Marshall blitz arms. Marshall. A couple of cracks at it. Parfit. Nudges it back. Webster and Myers. Smith. It was awkward. Oh, there's some corner players lining up and they talked the talk that was needed. Wilkie. Mason Wood from behind the ball and then playing it out to the extreme left. I mean, that was Geelong in the second quarter, wasn't it? Yeah. High half forwards, had really good defensive stability. Charming into the pocket. Oh, King with a reach, almost dragged it down. Stewart, advantage. After some hesitation, it's Zach Guthrie. Kicks to a disadvantage. It's not a bad... In fact, it's out on the floor, so it is a bad result. Oh, Saints fans are pensively loving this. Mason Wood has been a factor in this last quarter. And what I've liked about, about St Kilda this, this quarter, they could have held on to the win and played really safe, yet they've kept... That ball in motion, kept trying to give themselves opportunities and be aggressive. Ryder again, and King that time. So close. Ryder, Crouch. Not to be. It's an impressive display. You think there when you know, Geelong went to 19 points up and St Kilda, half through the third quarter, St, Ki St Kilda hanging on with for dear life. Two. Down the mill, Stanley takes the mark. Everyone else crashed down, he keeps on going. Close, wanted it out in front. He got what he was after. But ultimately, he doesn't hit the target. Instead, it's the post. It was a really good kick to close, you're right. Put it out in front, allow him to run onto it. You need a little bit of a lucky bounce, so it pops back up. But they're, they're the opportunities, if they're going to get back into this game, they're the opportunities they need to nail. Hill finds a way out. Battle. We're down to nine minutes in this last quarter. 
There's some tired boys out there, Hutto. There is. Exhausting day. Hutto gives it everything he's got. Arms are tied up. Stanley got it down, and look at them just jump all over whoever has the football. And unsurprisingly, is Jack Steele. Shoulder taped up. The wounds of the afternoon on display. Marshall left it behind. Selwood and Dangerfield fighting each other for it. Such is their appetite and desperation. The ball pings around. Which way will it turn? Tui was turning with it once, and then a second time, and the old warrior got out with footy in hand. Gave it to Blitzarves. They're being pushed back, though, by the Saints. Collar Jasny to Smith. He can sense that Hill was close, and he did the right thing. Myers, the Cats get ahead on the angle now. It's Duncan. We're down to 8.25, and he eases the kick for Zach Guthrie. Dangerfield and Stanley are deep. Cameron's in amongst it as well. That's where it heads. Close. Stanley at the back. Hawkins tried to fling the boot at it. Again, unconcerned. The Saints defence do what they had to do. Membry got a nudge, no whistle. Guthrie plays it back, and the Cats will come again with more precision this time. Well done, Kim. He's not a player that plays his way, is he? Yeah, just great composure there. It's a tough kick, but he's got that in his arsenal. Jeremy Cameron was there on his own. That's what they need. So Kilda defenders, midfielders are setting back for the long kick. It's a good now there from the veteran. 24 goals for the season, but none today. Until now, Jeremy Cameron steps forward and on the long, straight shot. He gets the Cats back within reach. It's a nine-point ball game again as he resuscitates their chances. Yeah, so they've been having issues going inside their forward 50, limited for opportunities, but, you know, Duncan goes forward as an opportunity to go inside forward 50, just lowers the eyes. So you can see there, if the camera had a pan to the top of the goal square, right as they're waiting for that longer kick, I love the way he went back and sees that, Louis. The great thing about playing forward is that you can have a quiet day, but you can impact. You can impact the game late. He's just kept himself involved in the game. Obviously, it was a fantastic kick from Duncan, but he has to go back and finish the job. Beautiful kick. Again, it's back to nine as Ryder climbs the highest. Crouch feeds it back through the Ruckman. And out by aggression to half forward. Billings. Oh. Unwavering. Takes a terrific mark. Didn't want to impetuously pull the trigger. He goes long. King crashes the pack. Sharman feeds it. Membry. Instinctive kick for goal. Hits the behind post on the foot. What I have loved about Max King's day is that he hasn't taken a huge amount of marks, but he hasn't allowed the Geelong defenders to take intercept marks. So they've only taken 11... Uh, 12 for the day as a team. It's below their normal number, especially when they win. So Duncan from the deepest, darkest defence. Down to Myers. Cats up to the wing. Doesn't look like they'll go further yet. Wilkie tracks down the ball. And then plays it coolly and calmly to Sinclair. Back in reverse. Inviting the Cats. To come chase. Enough precision to pat. Billings demands it. Seb Ross got busy. There's danger in that kick. Work to do. Stengel, Billings going one way. Got through. Quick change of direction. Ross had to find that left boot. Windhager, the future for the Saints. Hugs in the chest mark. He's got Jones to work with here on the right. And we're down to six minutes left. And you just learn from that Billings kick. It, it's not a kick that you need to take. You've got a, a nice little lead of nine points. Play a little bit safer. Get that defensive structures behind the ball. It's a buffer, but not a big one. Stewart doesn't mark. Membry goes quickly off to Gresham. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's deep. It's Duncan out of position. Wood safely takes the mark. It's such a good kick from Gresham. One to have the vision, but also the penetration to put it towards Wood's advantage. 
Yeah, it's Gresham, but yeah. it's the eight clearances. So Mason Wood, former kangaroo, he's found a home, he's found a position to his liking. With plenty of time as a forward, closes the eyes, knows what he has to do. The goal and maybe the victory is staring him in the face. Ooh. Missed some opportunities last week. And Brett Ratton can barely believe it. So the door is very much a jar for the Cats. Guthrie to Atkins. The improvisers just with a hack kick forward. And the spoil was too late from Tom Hawkins. I was a little bit surprised they didn't go straight down the middle from the kick in. Ryder plays it short to Sinclair. Ten points the difference. Under five to go. Hill. Charman. King didn't fly. Long. Billings screaming for it. Windhager. They play it back to get the right shot. And they will. Jack Billings. He was there for a long time. Joel Selwood desperate to get out there. But there's nothing he can do right now except hope that Jack Billings misses. Well, they've found those kicks on the periphery really well in this second term. It has been a very smart half of football by this St Kilda team. Jack Billings has had to wait and wait and wait for his opportunity. But the lights are shining bright now for Jack Billings. You build him up there, Hutto. Oh, <laughs> you tried to get him over the line. Good return, though, Hutto. 21 disposals. Just love to kick that one. Now, too, he goes for the monster. We've seen that before. Hawkins has gone back to the goal square. If the Cats get through, he'll have an opportunity. They're playing a man down in their defensive structures. And Hill retrieves it for St Kilda. And now St Kilda have that much coveted possession. Geelong still need two straight kicks to win. Memory may start to float down behind the football, which is his normal role late in quarters. How? Three minutes to go. The tension is felt all the way around this Marvel Stadium. This, this is the one where you, where you still want to keep going forward, though, Hutto. Still keep taking ground. Webster goes for territory, goes for Marshall and for memory. Stewart, it's off hands. That makes the job difficult. Tui, no way through that time. O'Connor to set a half forward. Cameron against two. At the back, it's Sinclair repelling again, but it was a wild handball. Duncan was dangerous. Yes, he was. It's McKenzie's ball. Well worn by McKenzie there. There's a big hit coming through. as he can. Right up. Denied that time by Blitzars. Zach Guthriel over the top with the tackle. Pressure was laid out. More precious seconds tick away. That's one of the questions coming in was St Kilda seemed to have picked the tall forward line. Now, were they going to be too tall when the ball hit the ground? Marshall, Ryder, King, Memory and Sharman as well. Memory has a fantastic gone, job. As you said, Brady, Memory's gone behind the ball now just in case for the Saints. A minute 50. Can the Cats mount something from the wing? No. It's Hill. So they are a man down ahead and Stewart. Powerful in the air. Everyone has to be committed. They've got to find some juice even if they're out of it. Windhager over it. Atkins tried his darndest to get through and through he got. Now to Isaac Smith. He charges off. He wants to make the right call. It's a handball to Myers. He kicks instinctively. Knuckle at right half forward. A fumble and then another. Eventually he the target and we've seen this before Jeremy Cameron kicked a goal from here earlier in the quarter there is no margin for error now for Geelong he knows that they're against the clock they're against the odds Jeremy Cameron bought to the club to kick goals under all sorts of circumstances it's not online it falls short Hawkins had a bit of it not enough and surely now the Saints. The Saints. That's out of bounds, is it? We might get a check. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, cool. Score review. Umpire's call is a behind. Can we please confirm if the ball hit the post, the behind post? Review underway. Certainly looks like it there, doesn't it? If it is, it's a throw in. Review complete. Looking at this angle, we can see the ball makes contact with the behind post. Decision on scoreboard. Geez, that plays into Geelong hand, Geelong's hand. Boundary throwing gives him another opportunity, which they didn't think they would have had. So the throw in, and the Saints will be alert to the danger. No one's better in the competition than Tom Hawkins than creating something from this very situation. What Stengel long. Does he take it out of the air, or does he tap and hope he kicked it out of the air? And they'll go again. Billings. Hill. Kicks perhaps to safety. No. To Koning, it's a throw. That's no advantage. Geelong need the perfect play. Time off as well. They need a goal on the run. Well, they're, well, they're lining up. You can see Cameron here. Smith's not too far away. Yeah, they need to get the game to Cameron. He goes short to Smith. Gets one high. 26 seconds. Clock still running. Clock still running. Isaac Smith for a monster goal. It's not to be. And the Saints are just about there. And that realisation is sweeping around Marvel Stadium. It's reached the coach's box. They can feel how big this victory is. They were staring defeat in the face in the second quarter. But they found a way. One of their best quarters in recent history. The best, in fact, since 2017. Has set up a memorable afternoon at Marvel Stadium. Sensational! The Saints are on the rise. last week against Melbourne so they would have learned a lot on how to play and come up against the best sides and I reckon for that period in the second quarter they went back into their shells the ball movement was a little bit safer and that gave Geelong the energy that they needed to, to really take it to them offensively then after half time I mean Paddy Ryder was huge Jay Gresham around the ball was huge let's get down to Cameron Mooney thanks boys Paddy I was just saying, it's a huge win for the footy club. Just how big was it after the last couple of weeks? Yeah, look, we felt like the Cairns game was one that we let get away. Um, we had no excuse today. We were just beaten on the night. Um, and then last week, come up against the best side, and we take a lot of learnings out of that. Um, and that second half, we did some good stuff there and played our way. And tonight, we knew it was going to be a battle tonight. It always is when you come up against Geelong, but I think in that second half there, our boys just dug in, I reckon they saw him grit their teeth a lot in the contest and I reckon that's what got us over the line. Well, tell us about that second half. It was a massive turnaround. You're 16 points down. You end up 16 points over three-quarter time. What was set at half time to turn that? I think um, they just owned the ball a little bit and, you know, they were cleaner. They had better shape and, you know, we collapsed a little bit and fumbled. We coughed it up a little bit to them. So it was about just taking care of the ball and then taking a few steps and then using something that's turning up. And, you know, we get better game play out of that. We move the ball better. The forwards love it when we get out and get it in there to him and it's a fun way to play. The partnership that you all got with Marshall at the moment, I just saw you, you gave him a little hug and you whispered something in his ear. Just tell us about your little relationship. Look, I just said to him that he's probably not 100% fit um, and I can see that and I played through injury before and you just got to keep getting out there. So, And all it takes sometimes is for one of your teammates or coaches to come up and just tell you that they appreciate your effort. So that's what I said. I said I appreciate your effort. I know you're hurting a little bit, but it's still so good for us. Paddy, I reckon they appreciated your effort tonight, mate. Your second half was outstanding, mate. Go and enjoy it. Thanks, mate.
Thank you. Back on the winners list, holding on to beat Geelong by 10 points. They move to six and three and jump into the top four. Nick Brewalt, there's a big smile on your face at the moment. <laughs> it was a really mature performance, wasn't it? At half time, they were really challenged. So that third quarter blitz where they just came out and piled on the goals uh, against Geelong. I, I think a bit of a coming of age performance for this group who had a really good year a couple of years ago when they played finals. Last year was a disappointment. Started the year well, but have been